Join me now to weigh in, representing Arizona's 5th Congressional District, Congressman Andy Biggs. Congressman, a, a lot to chew on here with my introduction. Uh, but first, let's start with your reaction to this leak. Uh, obviously, an egregious breach of trust, if you will. We've never seen anything like this before. It's really shocking. Yeah, I mean, what the leak does is it really undermines the uh, credibility of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court as an institution of, of respect. And it may have been the last government uh, institution that actually had some respect. Um, so that goes away. But, but it's more insidious than that. I view whoever did this, they did it to do a number of things. Number one, they wanted to intimidate and pressure the uh, Supreme Court justices who support overturning Roe. Uh, to maybe change their position. That's that's egregious. That's terrible. Um, and then they also want to distract, in my opinion, from the rest of what's happening in our society as a result of Joe Biden's uh, just terrible policies that are hurting this country. And then I guess the third thing is this side always wants to cause discord, disunity, and disharmony and civil disorder. And that's where they are today. And that's what's happening as a result of that leak at the Supreme uh, Supreme Court. I hope we do find out who it was and I hope we find out quickly. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of us predicted the violence and this type of rioting that would happen. And the mainstream media kind of gives it a pass. I haven't seen any big complaints about what we saw just last night in LA. It's obviously really terrible. Uh, but you know, it's one thing to voice your opinion and want to be heard. It's another thing to attack police officers and shatter police car windows and set things on fire. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, this, I mean, you hit it in your monologue about uh, a, a quote, mostly peaceful protest. There's no such thing as mostly peaceful protest. It's either peaceful or it's not, um, you know, because if there's violence like we saw last night, that becomes a riot. And, uh, you know, I, I keep track of this stuff. I call it the insurrection from the left. They get out and they riot. They, in hypocritical terms, the, the media says, well, that was just them exercising their rights. No, exercising your rights is going out and gathering and uh, expressing your opinion on political issues or other issues. And here they were doing, you know, it looks like it started off, but then there's always some crazos who will come along and want to uh, commit violence. And we see that all the time from the left. And it's always excused from the left. And I just want to say one other thing. The rhetoric from some of the members of Congress has actually uh, started some of this, this, uh, this violent effort, in my opinion. So, so maybe there, we should get a special committee to investigate them. What do you think? Um, uh, clearly, an investigation uh, will be conducted. Um, but, I mean, what do you think will happen to the person who, or people who leaked this? Well, if they're, if they're an attorney, they, they stand to lose their bar license, their ability to practice law. Um, I believe that when they get out there, the left is going to lionize them and, and make them into heroes, as they're already trying to do. The other aspect of it is, uh, I, I was looking last night, I couldn't find a specific crime that they could be charged with, but we certainly could. Uh, uh, I'd like to know if there's uh, 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 non-disclosure agreements within the U.S. Supreme Court or whether they just always trusted each other. And so we need to find out that out. Maybe they should, they could get some help uh, from the legislative branch if they need it. Totally unethical. Uh, now, we have some video here of Senator Elizabeth Warren melting down. So let's take a listen. We'll tape. For, for decades now, and we are going to fight back. seen Pocahontas is upset since the results of her DNA test came out, right? I mean, the, the Democrats yeah. are using this as a campaign uh, tool. They don't have a lot to campaign on. This is like perfect timing for them. They're hoping to get their base excited over this. Uh, but again, I mean, let's look at where we're going as a nation. I mean, I think we, we need to have a real conversation about the, the atrocity of abortion. It's like the biggest atrocity of my lifetime. And the left, they're so dishonest about what abortion really is and how it harms women. It's not female women empowerment. Yeah, that's right. And, and, 
And it, we, they never want to talk about the harms. They never want to talk about the specifics. They always say things like, we want to keep it safe and legal. But it isn't safe or legal for that poor unborn child who's in the mother's womb. And then you said this in your monologue again, and I agree with it 100%. There is no constitutional protection uh, for abortion. There is nothing in the, either the Bill of Rights or the, the Constitution itself that says, okay, we're going to allow abortion or, uh, you know, a murder of a baby in the womb. That not, There's nothing in there that says that. And there's nothing in there that says uh, right to privacy. Both of those are fabricated uh, uh, pieces of, of, of judicial legislation that happened uh, in the 60s and 70s. And, and Joe Biden, you know, he, again, always says a mixed message, a confused message. But the reality is there is no such right. The rights that we have uh, come to us from God, and we recognize those as a government, and we did so in the Constitution, and he wants to uh, set aside the Constitution. And then over at MSNBC, they're taking the outrage way above a 10. Let's take a look at what they're saying, and we'll react to that after roll tape. There are a range of different rights and principles that are implicit, um, but not necessarily explicit in the Constitution. And one of these things the court has said in its past is abortion, this idea that there are liberties, including the right to determine how your body will be used and to not make these choices under the compulsion of the state. We don't hear about that. And again, I can't even express the magnitude of this decision. This is not just overturning Roe versus Wade. It is actually withdrawing a right that had previously been conferred. We have never done anything like that in the history of this country. And this may pretend to put this off on the states to make their own decisions, but we've already seen Missouri enact or propose a law that would make it a crime to leave the state or deny individuals the opportunity to leave the state to seek abortion care elsewhere. And this is something that happened in the days when interracial marriage was prohibited. It could be a crime to actually leave the state to transact an interracial marriage. So we are actually going to see not a state-by-state se state settlement of this, but actually more interjurisdictional conflict over abortion and the withdrawal of a right that many Americans have come to take for granted at this point. So we just heard this host try to compare overturning Roe to banning interracial marriage. Like, that's a leap. And, and you know, this is so, Steph, this is so Offensive. egregiously illogical. So what she's talking about are what we call privileges and immunities, and those are granted by government. That's so an executive privilege is granted by government. It's recognized by the court. The court can limit a privilege because it is recognized. Uh, it's, it's not a right. There is no right to abortion. That's what the judges say. And that's what conservatives have said, because there is nothing in the Constitution that recognizes that as a right. If you would have if they would have made the argument, well, it's a privilege to um, to to have an abortion. And so. Uh, then the courts could say, then they would have no argument because the privileges, can they come by, by government, they can be taken away by government. Rights are given by God and are designed to be, uh, we recognize them to be protected by government. It's not the other way. And so they get it all backwards and they, they do it on purpose and they try to make specious relationships uh, which have absolutely no uh, rational basis or tie to the actual Constitution. That's their problem. Well said, Congressman. We're going to have to leave it here. Thank you so much.